Hello, I've been spending most of my time on the new allotment but here are a few things I've done at home and on this plot. These sunflowers are going gangbusters. I put two in each pot and most of them I've got to fee one so uh, no misses. Every pot has got at least one in, mostly I've got two so uh, pleased with that and then uh, it's difficult to uh, sort of pick the best out of the two sometimes but I might leave them for a bit longer and then uh, split them up. These goji berries are still growing but very very slowly. I was gonna wait till they grow up a bit more and then prick them out into individual pots but they're just growing so very slowly. Compare that to the aubergine next to it <laughs> and they went in about the same time I think. The fissilis have transplanted okay, peppers seem happy enough. I'm having a rethink about what I'm going to do with this area because I keep digging up carpet, layers and layers of it. This carpet tiles and I lifted the carpet tile and under, under it is a, another layer of carpet that's been folded over. So once I lifted that, under that there's another bit of carpet that's all rotten and it's all fibres falling apart. And of course, under that is the roots of all this other stuff. You know, this carpet doubled over and then under it there's more ruddy carpet. And then we've got all these roots of this to dig up. So I'm thinking putting in ground beds over here is not a good idea because I mean there's not just a little bit of carpet here and there. It starts at that end where those barrels are. I'll put those in because I thought that's where the carpet ended. I thought it would just put a bit of carpet on the edge. But no, this area here was where I uh, dug up those uh, great big scaffolding poles. So this area wasn't carpeted but the rest of it I'm going up to that fence which is the boundary between my plot and the next one and goes right to the back all the way here all the way along right to the edge I mean that's the fence on the other side so it goes right across 10 meters across carpeted and it's a good six to eight meters uh, well I haven't dug this bit up but we'll see if there's carpets under there and then, you know there's things like they've used asbestos for edging borders. I mean honestly it's unbelievable. God there's more asbestos here that I can just just found on oh no, this carpet. So this whole area I mean if I had the time and the energy but I've got other things to do I've got the other plot to sort out. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to cut my losses I'm going to put all the pumpkins and squash which trail anyway in here I'm going to leave the carpet in place because even if I did lift the carpet at the moment because of the lockdown we're not going to get any skips for months so I'll have a big pile of carpet and we're not allowed to burn anything so if I dig up the stumps they'll be sitting around as well so I'm going to go for plan B got some containers so I'll put the squash and pumpkins in here and leave it as it is because I mean it's just like not, not even just a single layer of carpet two three layers of carpet <sighs> why do they do these things they just put bring rubbish in and of course underneath it it's another piece of carpet that's just completely fall, fallen apart and all that's left is the plastic bits and all the uh, fiber has disappeared and when I dig under the carpet, there's no end of glass. Look at it. I unearthed this bit and it's just riddled with broken glass. So uh, I'll do the best I can but I think I'm going to cut my losses. I'm at the age where I choose my battles. And this is one that really isn't worth fighting. If I can put my pumpkins and squash here, I'll have enough beds for other things. So if the pumpkins and squash are put in here, I'll be okay. And uh, I'll just cut these brambles down to the ground level and I'll deal with anything that comes up. I mean, this gooseberries come up on its own. Of course, there's lots of nettles and things, but I'll leave them, I'll deal with them later. Because I've got this plot and I've got the other plot to sort out and I just don't have time because we're in first week of April and I need to get the beds in sorted and uh, put the plants in. And with this lockdown, there's no way we can get anything can't get skips, we can't take anything away, we can't burn anything. So uh, we're going to have to go for plan B. And I'll show you why. There's all this rubbish here 
there, but I'm just going to go into my neighbour's plot. I want to show you the sort of thing that people do. I mean, the, she's in the process of cleaning up her plot, but this is her neighbour. Look at the state of it. It's supposed to be 75% cultivated. I don't think there's about 5% cultivated. It's just people just bring rubbish here. It's just a rubbish dump. There's absolutely nothing there that I could say has been cultivated. Might be the odd tree or bush somewhere, but I don't know, she's got a couple of bits of rhubarb. And that's two plots. Disgusting, absolutely disgusting. There's people waiting to get a plot. I was waiting for like a year and a half to get a local one. Then I changed to this site. And look, this is what people do. And she's had this for years. This about 60, 70 square meters here that is just basically wall to wall carpet. But my plan was to put the compost heaps at the back anyway, so that's going to take up some of that space. So they'll go there, various bits and pieces will take up some of that space, and then we'll see if this fruit tree does anything. But that whole area from that end to that end is mostly carpet and it's all uneven and to get it leveled it's going to be a nightmare and all these stumps have to be removed it's going to be three big compost bins and leaf mold bins so they'll take up pretty much most of the back fence but I can't sort the back fence yet because there's all this asbestos here and Mandy doesn't want to go near it <laughs> so until they come and remove it and uh, as we're in lockdown, who knows when that will be. I mean, they weren't too uh, keen on coming in and doing it before. We've been on the, at them for months. So it uh, could be a while before this gets done. So I can't do this fence. And then once that's done, I can put the compost bins here and a wood chip path here and pumpkins and squashes in containers along here. And uh, leave the stumps and uh, things in place because some of these things are really huge. I mean, that's my thumb. It's thicker than my thumb. And that's just a bit of bramble. And the root is like, it's gonna be impossible to dig all this stuff out. Well, even once I've got the carpet out. I'm getting really sick of this place. Not because of what it is, but because of what people have done to it. Alistair gave me this old bath, which he'd taken out of a house and uh, I was going to use it as a sort of wildlife pond. Then when I got it back, I realised that it was damaged there. And there's another crack in here somewhere. So it won't be very trustworthy for holding water. So uh, what I'm going to do is put it in that corner and use it as another container. Because it'll be fine for growing plants in, but uh, it's a bit uh, risky using it as a... Uh, wildlife pond because it's not watertight and I could have plugged the bottom but got this great, huge great crack on the side and it's all damaged so that's no good I mean what it would cost all the sealant and stuff I'd have to get to sort this out I'd be better off just getting a pond liner and building a proper pond or I'll wait till I find a, a decent bath the problem is it's in this corner of the allotment and I have to put it right across in the other corner <laughs> ah, typical okay this bath is more or less where it uh, needs to go but uh, i'm not going to do anything else with it i'm not going to level it off or fill it because before we do that we need to remove this stump and that stump behind the barrel and once i've done that i can move this metal plate and get rid of this and then this can go right up against the fence. But that's a job for another day when we've got a chainsaw. So it's more or less where it wants to be, but uh, it's sort of out of the way because it was getting in the way in that corner. It's a shame because the nice little ledge there, I mean, it's quite deep, but that damage is just too bad. It'll be fine for putting plants in. My friend Graham has just given me a couple of water butts. They're perfect to go at the back where I need them for the containers so uh, his timing couldn't have been better so they'll have to sit here for the moment uh, and eventually 
once that fence is sorted they'll sit where that barrel is and uh, I'll be using it to water all the containers in this area. I'll uh, set some uh, rainwater catchment for these when they're over there and then it can be used to water all the containers in this area and in the summer when water runs short then I can just fill them from the hose so I don't have to water everything using a hose every day. This bundle of privet branches is for another plot holder who wants to have a privet hedge in front of his plot, a sort of about not quite a meter and um, put them in the ground every 50 centimeters. Some will survive, some won't, but that will be enough. I brought these sunflowers in to the greenhouse because they were getting a bit leggy at home. Obviously, they're ready to be potted up, so uh, we'll do that here. But we had one, two, and that one, three casualties. But then I always said, anyway, there's that one in that pot that's still okay. This one's okay. So uh, there's three losses in, in transport, but that's why we oversow everything. Allow for losses. Those are ready to be potted up. These are ready to be potted up. The broad beans will go in this morning. Right, it's time to move these broad beans and plant them on the other plot. But uh, this lot mostly came up. This lot, not so good. I've had a few misses on these. That one, I think that's a dud. It came up, but it's just not done much. So, got those a dud. So the broad beans will go. And these peas will go in as well. And that spinach. Right, I'm getting the first broad beans in. Obviously, now the rubbish makes sense. People said, oh, what are you doing with those bags of bottles? So there, as I protect is on top of the canes. But the uh, tiring bit, is this being no dig, <laughs> I have to crowbar the stuff in, put that post in, wiggle it about till I've got a wide enough hole and then put the broad beans in and of course if it was something simple it wouldn't be such a deep hole but these are in double depth toilet rolls so they're quite deep so you need to dig a deep, but look at the roots on that once they take off they'll be, they'll do well. So yeah, it's a bit of work to get that in and uh, wiggle that, but uh, I'll get there. Well, that's that sorted. So in the next few videos, I'll be working on the new plot. So goodbye for now and come back soon.